Petrol scarcity and long queues are fueling station return to streets of Abuja. Yesterday, the alleged indebtedness of the federal government has crippled marketers' effective procurement and distribution capacity. It was learned last night, according to the Independent Petroleum Marketers Association of Nigeria, IPMAN, the government was owing more than 100 billion naira in overdue bridging payment. They alleged that 100 billion naira debt due to procure petrol by defunct petroleum equalization fund, now Nigerian Midstream and Downstream Petroleum Regulatory Authority, has now been has not been paid despite persistent demand. We're now being joined by Chinedu Uka DK, the PRO Ipman. Good morning, Mr. Chinedu Uka DK. It's good to have you join us this morning. Yeah, good morning. How are you? I'm very well. Thank you so much. Uh, so let's yeah. get straight to the conversation. Now, apart from the 100 billion naira debt, what else is the bone of contention for the marketers? Okay, you, uh, you know that uh, uh, products are being breached from uh, Lagos, Warren, and uh, Port Harcourt to Abuja. Uh, because uh, Abuja, especially at the Sunilaka Depot, uh, there is no product. The Sunilaka Depot has not been loading, it's out uh, because it cannot be filled with uh, product through the pipelines. Also, you are very, very aware that uh, Nigeria is feeding uh, its nation uh, through the vessels and the waterways. So NMPC is using their PPOs, private uh, tank farms, and uh, other uh, refinery facilities and depot facilities to be able to send uh, petroleum products, especially to the northern areas where there is no waterway. So, you know, during this period of time, there is uh, this economic aspect of the, the PEF, which is German uh, because uh, uh, marketers are not uh, getting their payment uh, immediately. And also the high cost of diesel. Uh, diesel is at almost 679 naira per liter. And the cost effect of that makes uh, marketers very, very wary about bridging this product because at the end of the day, you find out that the money you spent money will be very, very much higher than the money you will receive as best payment. And the, other, or the, the social and religious aspect of this is that, uh, uh, you know, uh, there is Salah too. So most of these our drivers have gone to Salah. And I also know that uh, any moment from now, they, they will come back and resume uh, work effectively. Because most of the uh, truck drivers uh, are predominant uh, Muslims. Around 70% of them are predominant Muslims loading products to the north. So they, they, they must have to uh, respect that festival. So it is that that what truncated the supply chain a little. It is not that it's no product. Uh, NMPC has confirmed uh, they have enough uh, sufficient products for proper distribution. So these are the little things that uh, are stating these little hiccups. But I also want to advise uh, Nigerians, uh, especially those in Abuja, not to uh, indulge in panic buying. Uh, because any moment from now, this issue will be faced on like within this week when full operations will start. And uh, when federal government has also promised that they are going to look into the claims of marketers and be able to settle source. To so enable marketers to uh, go back and start transporting as usual. But I also want to appeal that it is so important that the federal government should look into our pipelines so that we will not be able to be settled. Uh, with this kind of excuses about PEF. If our pipelines are in order, I also believe that the issue of this PEF will not arise, or this uh, huge amount of uh, uh, PEF indebtedness to marketers wouldn't have arise, because marketers would have been loaded from their TDZ, and which is very, very close to the area of dispatch and the distribution to individuals. Okay. Uh, thank you. All right, um, so, but is there a way to reach an agreement with the federal government on instalmental payment? Well, you know, it is a gradual process because uh, uh, this uh, debt is being processed. And uh, I also believe that up, even uh, as it's up to eight months, six months, that some of these uh, uh, bridging claims have been lying there in over one year. Some of these bridging claims have been lying there in Perth. And the uh, uh, market has really indebted. Uh, that was why when we had the last meeting in our CWC uh, in Abuja, our national president, uh, 
Alaji Debo Ahmed mm -hmm. was suggesting that, uh, uh, especially those in the oil and oil and gas uh, uh, stakeholders, should have what uh, what we call uh, uh, oil and gas plan or energy plan to be able to enable us access fund easily and uh, continue in business even while our funds are with the NMPs. Because because of this huge um, amount of funds are NMPs, we go to commercial bank to go and borrow money. I know the cost of borrowing. And at the end of the day, a lot of multiple charges are being charged. And you find out this, we are now robbing people to pay for. Uh, uh, transporters and marketers are almost going out of uh, business. The high cost of uh, wear and tear of these vehicles, uh, repairing them and all the rest of them, is really heavy on marketers. So I believe that uh, government should come down and sit down, especially with uh, IFMAN, NATO, PTD, and other stakeholders to be able to find uh, uh, elastic solutions uh, to issue of this uh, uh, pest. All right, um, just before we let you go now, do you think there's a permanent solution to the perennial back and forth on fuel? Well, the, the, the permanent solution is like what I have opened before, the, the, the repairing of our uh, refineries, because when these refineries are being repaired, especially the Port Harcourt to Warren and Kaduna refinery, when these uh, uh, refineries are being repaired, you, know, you also find out that petroleum products uh, will be produced around that area, that uh, TTZ, where this refinery is, because they are strategically located to be able to service uh, the whole of the nation. So if our refineries are upstream, the Kaduna refinery will be taken care of uh, Abuja and all the uh, those uh, boats, the middle and the northern part of the country. While the Warren refinery will also overlap to the north and the middle aspect of the and the midwestern zone and the western zone altogether. While the Takoa refinery is already servicing the south side and southeast, you know, the federal government, uh, you know, uh, designed this thing, uh, uh, knowing the, the nature of the, of, of the country. Because if we in Nigeria are producing petroleum products and we're heavily dependent on the production of petroleum products, not only that, this product comes through vessels and it's only in the waterways, uh, 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 Lagos and Wari, uh, that we can be able to, uh, and Calabar, that we can be able to uh, assess uh, petroleum products via the waterways. So taking it to the north is very, very cumbersome. But if our refineries are working and the pipelines are put in place, you will find out that different products will get to Yola, Dawa, through Gombe. Because Nigeria have pipelines. And these pipelines, some of them are old, can be replaced, uh, a kind of restructure of uh, some of these pipelines, and uh, ensure that these pipelines are put in place to be able to ensure that truck, truck drivers will no longer fly in a very long distance. They will just go within their territories, which is not even close, like uh, three to four kilometers or 200 kilometers to get this product and quickly disband them to the, the, to the filling stations. We have to let you go I, now. Uh, thank you thank so you much for much. being part of the uh, news this morning. We do appreciate your time. And of course, we thank wish you. the association and the country, uh, you know, yeah, the you best. Very You're always welcome. Thank you. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.